this morning is going to come from Psalm 103. Maybe while you're turning there or waiting for me to read that passage, I want to say to you that there's something that's been on my mind a lot as we've gone through a really interesting year. Um, We've had so many things that we've faced this year with the whole COVID pandemic, with the rioting, with Black Lives Matter, with an election coming up. And I get this sense that as Christians, sometimes we are mad. <laughs> we are we're mad at the the government. We're mad at masks. We're we're mad at the celebration of homosexuality. We're mad that we're being labeled or that anyone's being uh, labeled a racist or it seems like everyone's being labeled a racist. We're mad about liberal um, government. We're mad about abortion. And I feel like many times that's the record that's playing amongst us as Christians. I will admit to you that I am a uh, conservative. I'm very socially conservative. Um, I do believe that that lines up with scripture, scripture. And I would say that I can be one of these people. You know, the record that can be playing in my mind sometimes can be that we're mad about what's going on around us. And I can remember as a kid, my brother and I used to rock on chairs and listen to music. And, you know, initially that was a record player. Yes, I was alive and well when the record player was still commonly being used. And I want to say that I feel... Like the church, us as Christians, we need a new record. We need to take a record out and put a a new record on. And let me share with you this record that I think we should put on from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. This has really been on my mind lately, and I'm I'm yearning to discuss this with any who would listen. I feel like we have forgotten how great it is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I feel like we have forgotten at times all that he has done for us. I feel like we've forgotten sometimes all that he has done throughout history. And when you read the the psalmist here and in many of the psalms, and, and in fact in many portions of scripture, they have such a high and lofty and reverential and joyful view of God. And many times you will hear them recall, oh, do not forget about when, you know, we were slaves in Egypt and God brought the plagues upon the Egyptians and, and Pharaoh's son lost his own life and, and we were set free and, and God parted the, the dry ground and we went through and the army chased after us and it was closed in and, and we were in the desert and God brought water from a rock and he brought manna from the sky to feed us. Oh, how great is our God. And we do, church, we need to remember all the things that God has done throughout history. How about this one, church? That after many years of not hearing from God and and the way that he had sometimes revealed himself throughout Old Testament history, that God literally showed up. He is Emmanuel, 
God with us and he came and lived. God came and lived on earth and revealed himself for 33 years. He performed miracles right in our midst. They ate with him. They saw him. They, they touched him. And, and then Jesus, he, he died on that cross to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then he came back again and he showed the holes in his hands and the holes in his feet. Isn't it amazing all that Jesus has done to come back and reveal himself? He he vapored right through walls to come in the midst of his apostles and he ate with them and he had them catch a miraculous catch of fish. But you know what? I don't want to just marvel at that. As, as wonderful as all that is, and it is, church, and we need to remember that. I want us to remember what God has done for us. And I feel like, church, sometimes we forget. I am sitting here, and I have been a believer since 1996. And as I've shared to my church, I mean, listen, I was lost. I was lost uh, in the years prior to coming to Christ. I was smoking pot. I was drinking I had met my wife, so that had helped settle me down, but I was not living a godly life. And I almost paid for the consequences of my sin by death because of my actions. And I am so thankful that God revealed himself to me and sent people to me to help me to discover who he was, and that he gave me a desire to read his word, and that I gave my life to Jesus in October of 1996 before I ever had kids. And now I've been walking with the Lord for 24 years. He's radically changed my life. I'm now a pastor. I've been able to raise three kids in a Christian home. I have been so, so blessed. And I can think of all the different ways that God has has worked in my life, even through pain and suffering and even through hardship. You know, I I had a church, I have a church that's not real big right now, but I mean, it was really small for a long time and God sustained me and he, he helped me through that. He gave me humility through that and praise God for that. Praise God for even those hard, really hard years, because I know God was working and helping me and still is to develop my own character. God has been work at work through my life. And man, I am grateful. I'm grateful to Jesus. I'm grateful to be able to turn to him and to the power of his Holy Spirit, to have the comfort and counsel of his Holy Spirit in my life now. I have so much to be thankful for in having God in my life. Now, some of you may be thinking, you know, I don't have that dynamic transformational testimony where I went from being incredibly lost to uh, found now. Oh, how God has been there for you. You know, when you've been born and raised to know the Lord and and you've been a Christian as far as you can remember, do you know how much God has helped you? How much pain and suffering from the own consequences of your sin God has prevented you from? What an amazing thing. There's a delightful lady, you know, at our church and we were having a conversation about this this past week. And even as a believer, um, she's faced a lot of difficulty and hardship, primarily in consequences of sin and those people around her. But you know what? Even though she's faced a lot of pain and suffering as a believer, it hasn't been caused by her sin because she has been walking with the Lord really for her entire life. And as a result of that, she's got a wonderful family. She's got one husband who she's been with, you know, ever since they've gotten married. I believe they've got 20 years of marriage in them. And and God God has been with her and with all of us through all the ups and downs of our journey of life. And church, I think we forget I think we forget how good it is to have God in our lives. And I want to I wanna plead with you to think back 
to how God has helped you, how following God has helped you. You might even need to look at, you know what? What would your life have been like if you wouldn't have found God? What would your life have been like if certain events wouldn't have took place to to lead you to where you are right now? Oh, church, oh, church, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. May we not forget all that God has done for us. Are you thankful for having God in your life? I am. We need to change the record. We need to take off the record of all the things that we're mad about that are not helping us to win anyone to Jesus Christ. And we need to put the record on that's replaying in our mind of how good it is to have the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And that's the record that not only needs to play in our mind, but needs to play out of our voices because that is the one that's going to help people want to turn to our Lord and Savior. Let's put in a new record. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits.